This chapter features 10 tornadoes, including the Conger, Minnesota EF4 that was up to a mile wide at its largest and on the ground for over 45 minutes. This is the most tornadoes I have ever seen on a single chase. Four of the tornadoes were wedges at one point, and we had two circulations on the ground at once during several moments. This day also had some of the best storm structure I have ever seen. I had Danny Neal with me in the van, and was caravanning with Adam Lucio and his girlfriend Deb. We originally targeted the dry line in southwestern Minnesota. On the way out there, we drove underneath a cumulus field that would later spawn our supercell. But the field thinned out as we continued west. We made it to Laverne, Minnesota, and were sitting under clear skies and watched in dismay as our storm started to fire well to the east along the surface trough. We're heading northeast here, trying desperately to catch up with the line of storms that's moving away from us. At this point, I thought for sure that we were going to bust, having fallen well behind the storms. We also did this chase mostly without data, as Adam and I were having technical issues with our data cards or had no signal. The only data source we had was Danny's phone, and we weren't optimistic at this point as it showed a broken line of storms across central Minnesota that would probably congeal into a linear mess. Here are some high contrast cumulus towers on the back end of the storms which are severe warned. We punched through the line of storms here and came out just north of the rear flanking downdraft clear slot. The structure wasn't bad here, despite the storm's lack of a tornado warning. We thought this cell would eventually get interfered with by other cells, so we decided to cut south and make for tail end Charlie, which was now tornado warned and lifting out of Iowa into southern Minnesota. A couple of tornado reports came in right about this time from the storm we're heading to, and I thought for sure we'd miss the show. Just north of Keister, Minnesota, here we had a view of the storm's base. From a distance here, it looked like we had a big cone funnel or wall cloud. However, as we approached, it became obvious that this was probably more of a shelf cloud fanning out from the base. It quickly filled in with rain as well, so we cut north trying to stay ahead of the storm. That's when our storm went crazy with tornadoes. I'll contrast enhance the video here so you can see the first few tornadoes better. When we spotted the first tornado, Danny was calling it out and I didn't know whether to keep driving so we could get closer or stop to make sure I got it on video. So I started swerving all over the road. In the confusion, we lost Adam. You'll get peaks of the first two tornadoes as cones on the horizon. When I stop here, you'll see tornado number three as a brief rain-wrapped cone behind the second tornado. Our first instance of simultaneous tornadoes for the day. There's tornado number two poking out a few more times. Check out Convective Addiction's Minnesota Mayhem DVD. There's some really good shots of the first two tornadoes by Jesse Risley. We stopped several miles east of the town of Keister, Minnesota to let the storm come to us. What we thought was just a large wall cloud emerging through the rain turned out to be a large multi-vortex tornado. Our fourth tornado was a wedge that did some F2 damage to the outside of town. You can see multiple suction vortices spinning up underneath the wall cloud. Watch how the inflow band on the right grows dramatically in size too as the inflow increases. Contrast picks up here and what follows next is the best storm structure I've ever seen. Watch as a new mesocyclone spins up in the foreground just to the right of the old one. As the tornado moved behind the trees, I ran down the road to confirm that it was still on the ground. A glorious white cone tornado with another dissipating in the distance. Perfect storm structure here. Three tiers of rotation with the mesocyclone at the top, the tornado cyclone or wall cloud in the middle, and the tornado at the bottom. The white stovepipe morphed into a large multi-vortex tornado here. The tornado lifted here, probably leaving a circulation still at the ground, before another one quickly descended. This is the start of the Conger EF4. We watched a couple of power flashes here before we moved up the road to get closer.
huge cone in the distance. We saw emergency vehicles up ahead and figured they had blocked the road off. So we turned around and went west to get to the next north road. We were really worried that Conger was going to take a direct hit here, but as we turned north we could see that the tornado had missed the town to the north. You'll see Adam's truck here on the left as we meet back up coming into Conger. Jesse Risley also came in behind us, and we had all the convective addiction chasers on this storm together here. Watch to the right of the main tornado, you'll see a rope satellite tornado next to it. The clouds opened up here giving us a view of a huge cone tornado, with a violent looking debris cloud at the bottom. This is about when the tornado is doing EF4 damage. The tornado took a hard left turn to the north, which we didn't realize at the time. When we emerge from the trees, the tornado has morphed into a large wedge, approaching a mile in diameter. It's very lucky the tornado turned north and dissipated here, as it was heading right for the city of Albert Lee which would have been a huge catastrophe if this violent tornado hit it. We had to cut through Albert Lee to follow the storm, and we lost track of the base in the process. We waited for the storm on the east side of town, and finally it appeared as a striated supercell. Earlier on, we had bumped into some farmers. I thought they were storm spotters or chasers, so I asked if they were out spotting. I got a confused look, and they replied, We're planting! I warned them about the storm as they were in the path at the time, and they eventually caught up with us here and stayed to watch the storm. Watch the left part of the screen when the camera pans here, and you'll catch another tornado. We headed north to get in for a closer view. As we pass these trees, you'll see another wedge tornado. This tornado hit the town of Hollandale and did EF3 damage. The tornado ropes out here, but keeps dangling a funnel out in front of us. We cut east here to get ahead of the storm, not wanting to wind up in the core of the storm or underneath the base as it drops another tornado. Tilting the camera back, you might be able to make out another tornado. This is our 10th and final tornado for the day. Even though a large squall line was forming by this time, this storm remained as an embedded supercell and put down several more tornadoes as the night progressed. As this storm transitioned into an embedded high precipitation supercell, it still had some amazing structure on it with a big striated barrel shaped meso and menacing base. There were funnels dropping at random points up and down the otherwise shelfy looking base too. The lightning on this storm was also fantastic. There were tons of cloud to ground strikes originating from the anvil striking well ahead of the storm. Jeff Duda pulled up alongside here and I went to shake his hand between the two vehicles and a huge bolt of CG struck really close and made us both jump. Running on fumes, we headed into the town of Blooming Prairie to get gas, only to find the power off and the sirens wailing. We got some siren video before heading south to Austin, Minnesota and celebrating with steak dinner at the Applebee's. What we thought for sure would be a bus chase turned out to be one of our greatest chases ever.